What's up guys, I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a photographer out Southern California, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Canon 514XL Super 8 camera. I've always wanted to shoot Super 8, and I just have yet to purchase one. So when my dad's buddy gifted this to me, I was so thankful because I've just always wanted one of these and I just haven't had an excuse to get one yet. Real quick, um, my daughter painted my fingernails for Valentine's Day, so yeah, this isn't my normal nail color. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of take you through my learnings with this camera. I've shot two rolls through it, so maybe I'll have some uh, deeper review later, but I think I've kind of learned everything there is to know about this camera. It's really simple to use. And yeah, I just wanted to kind of share some learnings that I've had. And just take you through the features. This is like a little folding handle right here, which is pretty nice. You fold that out and hold it. I wish there was a lock on it because it kind of has a little bit of give. You know, as you're holding it, it kind of wiggles a little bit, but that's okay. So the lens itself is a nine to 45 millimeter zoom lens. So you focus by adjusting like this, and then you can zoom focus from nine to 45 millimeters. I'll put what that's equivalent to in 35 millimeters right here. I don't know off the top of my head. And then at the end of the range, there's a little knob that you pull out, and then you can go macro on 45, and you can go macro at nine millimeters. And so if you get too close, I think the minimum focal distance is four feet. If you get closer than four feet, you can pull that knob out and go macro and then you can get that kind of last distance of focus. So that's kind of nice to have. Focusing is probably the only thing that's a little difficult with this camera because it is manual focus. And the trick that people taught me was zoom all the way into 45 millimeters, look through, lock focus on whatever you're trying to focus on and then zoom back out as you wanna shoot and then pull the trigger and shoot. So that's how you shoot, is just pulling that trigger. Right here is the on and off switch. Um, there's a self timer, I didn't use that, I probably should have, cause then I could have had a little bit of video of me, but I didn't use that. There's a little zoom here. Mine might be broken, but I didn't really use it cause it's slow anyways. I like manually zooming right here. On this side, there's a little sunshine and indoor. I kept it on sunshine the whole time. I kept it on sunshine the whole time because I was using natural light. But if you're using fluorescent lights, what that does is it puts a filter over your film and so um, it tries to balance the light. But yeah, I just left it on sunshine the whole time. And then right here is 18 frames per second and nine frames per second. I left it on 18 the whole time. That's what gives it a unique characteristic. I think Super 8 is having 18 frames per second. We're typically used to seeing 24 or 30 frames per second and you don't really notice frame rate at all. But when you shoot 18 frames per second, it kind of gives it that jumpy, nostalgic feel. And so I think that's one of the pieces that I just really love about Super 8 is just that kind of nostalgic look to a film. It just automatically feels like it's from the Wonder Years or somewhere super old, which is awesome. Right here is where you open the, where you put the film cartridge. There's two AA batteries inside, and then this is where you drop the film cartridge. So this is what a cartridge looks like. There's the film right there. And you basically just put it right there, drop it in, close it up, and start shooting. And it's that simple. You don't have to load anything else. You just kind of drop that in. And then at some point, after two and a half minutes or so, you're gonna hear a little bit of a change in sound. And then that's when you know the roll is done. You can always take out the film cartridge and look to see if it's done or not. I'll show you what a finished roll looks like here. It kind of changes the split of the film. 
If you do open it though, you're gonna be exposing a couple of frames of your film. So just know that if whenever you're checking, you're kind of exposing that, you know, which is probably two, like five frames of a second. So almost half a second of film right there. So yeah, you just drop it in, pull the trigger, and you just keep shooting. And then this little bar over here will be changing and it will show you as you're kind of using up all your film. But I think once it gets to 50 seconds, like I have a two and a half minute roll here. So I don't really know if that works all the way with this more modern film, but you should probably hear a difference. The two rolls I shot, I didn't know when I finished and I just kept shooting. And then at some point I checked and the roll was done. So I don't know, I need to get better at that, I guess. So where to buy film, where to process it, all those questions. I use Pro 8 Millimeter. It's a film lab in Burbank, California. It's awesome. So they sell you these packages and it's film and processing and you're paying for it up front. They're not cheap. I think these are like 80 bucks or something um, per roll, but that includes the film cartridge and then you shoot the entire thing and then you ship it to them with some notes on how you want it scanned and then they process it and a few days later they send you back a download of your video. So that process was really easy and super nice and I love that like it was kind of already paid for ahead of time. So when I shot it, there was only a couple dollars expense in shipping. So you just pull open this package, again, insert the film and you're good to go. So a few things about Pro 8 millimeter. I used ASA 250 daylight balance film which 250 ISO is, you know, similar to a bright sunlight film. There's a there's brighter film, there's like 50 ISO. And so if you're in bright sunshine the whole time, I would recommend going with a 50 ISO. The 250 was a little bit more versatile, so I could go indoors and outdoors. When I was outside and it was a little bit overcast or morning, it was great. Once it got to full sun, as you can see in some of these fishing clips, it was too bright for the film. I think it was too overexposed. So if you're gonna be in bright sunshine, I would recommend getting a different film. If you're gonna be shooting in shade or indoor outdoor, 250 was a great call on that. Also, I bought these during Black Friday. I saw they were having a 30% off sale and it was kind of the same exact time I got my hands on one of these. So it was perfect timing. And I ended up buying a few rolls of this because it was 30% off, which is a great deal on something that's pretty expensive. So I would wait for them to have a sale and stock up on a bunch of rolls and then keep it in your fridge until you're ready to use it. That's pretty much it. And then once I sent it to the lab, they have you fill out a form online, this thing called Sprocket, and you choose how many frames per second you want it scanned at, how you want it developed, if you want it um, kind of auto settings to the best light, or if you want it push to stop, or whatever you kind of want the film to be um, processed as, they, they ask you that. And then also for the scanning, you can either get it 1920 by 1080, you can get it 4K, um, you can get it more vertical. You can show the sprocket hole and the top and bottom of each frame, or you can have it cropped in. I went with the wide scans that showed the sprocket hole and showed the top and bottom of the film. And I think that just kind of gives it the most natural, like super eight looking film. Like I want to see that kind of the extra pieces of it. Um, I think that's obviously what makes Super 8 super novelty and awesome. So this camera handled low light pretty well. Inside when I was shooting for simple, the light was pretty low. Um, I was shooting film too, and I was shooting 400 ISO at 320. And I was shooting pretty much wide open at like 2.0 or 1.4 and about anywhere from 60, 1 60th of shutter to 1 200th of a shutter, kind of right in that range. So there was pretty low light inside, but we were near the windows and it turned out pretty good. So yeah, I would say this 250 film handled lower indoor light pretty well, as long as you have some decent window light. And then, like I said, outside, it did great until it got bright full sunshine. So you're gonna have to shoot the entire roll you know, before you finish it and then process it. So just kind of know what you're gonna shoot ahead of time and get the film for that. 
Overall, I'm so stoked on how everything turned out. I thought these films looked great. You can watch a little family trip I did to Mammoth with my kids and my wife and our friends. We went sledding and went fishing. Unfortunately, we didn't catch any fish. Otherwise, that would have been awesome to have an actual fish in our fishing video, but next time. So that was kind of the first uh, role I shot, and so I got used to how this thing worked. I misfocused quite a few times, but I still think it has a really cool looking feel, and so it's not a huge deal when you misfocus with it. And then the second role I shot was for a simple campaign shoot, and I just love how that turned out. Again, misfocus a few times. I think most of that was due to this diopter. It, you can kind of unscrew and screw this diopter in to get it to your eye adjustment, and mine's like a little bit loose or broken or something, and so it kind of moves quite a bit. So that's something I'm gonna try to figure out how to fix, maybe super glue it or something, I don't know. So. Yeah, I forgot to mention that, that's this diopter here. So try to get it correct for your vision. So what you wanna do is, again, zoom all the way in to infinity on something, adjust this so it's in focus, and then leave it and you should be good to go. But yeah, I would highly recommend this. I think you can get these for like anywhere from like 100 to 300 bucks. I would say it's totally worth it. The real cost is gonna come into shooting film. You know, you're gonna be spending 50 to 100 bucks on a roll of this and processing so and this gets you two and a half minutes or so of footage so yeah it's gonna add up but i think it's a really cool unique look and i think it's highly commercial too i think a lot of people want that look so whether you're shooting for brands or shooting wedding videos or anything really i think it gives it a really cool unique feel and you could you know, do a whole little video for a hundred bucks or so, so of cost to you. So that's pretty much it. Hope you learned a little bit about the Canon 514 XL. I'm gonna have a lot more videos with this coming. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any comments below, drop those below. Thanks for watching. Real quick, I wanna thank my sponsors. Um, Simple. Uh, this hat and all of our apparel are out now. So if you want to shop, you can use my code. It's woodark20, W-O-D-A-R-C-K 20, and you can get 20% off your order. So yeah, go grab some apparel, some shoes. That's who I work for now. I love it. And their gear is amazing. So go check it out. Also, I want to thank Holdfast. Holdfast has been sponsoring me for a couple years now. They've been so amazing, getting me my all my camera straps, uh, my dual camera harnesses for weddings, everything. I, whenever I shoot, I have Holdfast straps on, and so I just love them, and yeah, go check them out. Thanks. Thanks.